Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is component overlap, actors and components? This one's going to be a little weird and slightly difficult to explain, but we'll get through it. It's also got a fun name because it's component actors overlap components. We'll just explain what it does and what it's used for. So let's look at the nodes themselves. This is going to cover two nodes, our component overlap actors and component overlap components. They are the same node, they just output two different things, which is similar to our other overlap nodes. But let's go ahead and look at what they are intended for. Now our other overlap nodes, our sphere, our capsule, and our box, use basic primitive shapes to define what we're going to use as our overlap check. The component overlap actors basically can take in a primitive component and use its collision volume to check. So we can have something that's different sized or different shaped. Now I did attempt to do this video using something different shaped like a cone, for example, but it's really hard to draw the debug cone properly based on a mesh input. So we're just going to use a cube so I can show you what I mean by in terms of how it works. So let's go ahead and look at it. Right now I have this set up. If we go ahead and hit play and I fire, we're going to see a box. This is the representation of the primitive component I'm using for my overlap check. But you will notice it's not really doing anything. There's a reason for that. There's a few things that are important to note about this. In order for the overlap node to work, you, your component has to be able to overlap. In this instance, I have a cube attached to my sphere as I'm firing my projectile. So I fire my projectile and there's a cube physically attached to it. If we look at this projectile and we grab my cube and we go ahead and turn on my visibility of the cube, you can see, well, there's a cube, but I have it visible so we can't actually see it. Now I've also gone ahead and set up my collision channel on the cube to no collision. No collision means no blocking and no overlapping. So what's happening is when it attempts to check for the overlap, it grabs the component, it checks to see if this component is overlapping anything, and if it is, it returns back the valid results. The problem is the component I'm using for my test has no overlapping enabled. So if I change this to overlap all, and we go ahead and try it again, and I fire it off, you'll notice things get destroyed. Now things got destroyed properly. You may be wondering why this guy didn't get destroyed. Well, like our other overlap nodes, there are requirements. So we need our component. This is our primitive component that we're gonna use as a reference for our collision. Then we have a component transform. Basically, where is this component gonna be? What's its rotation, scale, size, location? All of the transform settings for this component for our actual check. But then we have the object types, which is a requirement. This is the type it needs to overlap against, our object channel. In this case, it's going against pawn. When we look at our characters in the world, this character, he is set to pawn for the object type. Good. This character, however, I've changed to world static. So even though we are overlapping, his object type is world static, and this is checking against pawn only. So that is a requirement. Optionally, we can have the actor class filter. So let's say we wanted all the pawns, but only certain ones, we could filter it out. So only these ones would show up in our list. And then if we want to remove some of them from our list, like maybe the player, if he is doing this, or certain things we want removed, we can ignore actors by simply adding them to an actor array here. In terms of our outputs, we're gonna find either we get a return value of true or false, if we have anything inside of our array, and if we do have something in our array, it's gonna be either an actor array, if we overlap actors, or a component array, if we're overlapping components. Remember, components are basically the parts that make up our blueprints or our actors. In this case, if we were looking at our enemy, the enemy itself is gonna be our actor that's returned. And if we look for the components, we're gonna get our capsule component because it has a collision channel set up, and our mesh because it has a collision channel set up. 
we wouldn't get something like our error component because it has no collision channel. That is your only distinction between these two nodes, the actors and the components. It's just the output. So in terms of a visual effect here, like I said, it's going to take in the values from our project, from our component that we're putting in. In this case, our cube, I've scaled up to four by four by four. My default settings are going to be one by one by one, which actually roughly comes out to a 50 by 50 by 50 box. Remember, these overlap nodes don't have a visual component. I'm simply drawing a debug box so we can see that this cube, where it's hitting. And if I fire, you'll see now it's a much smaller box. We have this little tiny box. Let me go ahead and change his collision channel back to pawn. We'll set him back like that. And we'll go ahead and change his capsule component back to pawn as well, like that. We'll go ahead and go back into our settings here and we'll show you what I mean by um, it uses the settings from the component. So this component has a rough size of 100 by 100 by 100. If we were to fire on the ground, you'll see that we have basically one of these squares, which is 100 by 100 for the units. That's going to be the, the size of our box in the world. And I can actually show you if I went ahead and changed this to visible. And we went ahead and we played this and fired. You'll see our little box going along with our thing. You can see our box when it hits and things like that. If our box is a different size, or a box is a different shape, or a box is a different set of scale or rotation, these settings are what feeds into our transform here with these collision settings from our component, and that's what feeds into our overlap. So in this case, I could take my cube and multiply it by 4. So now my cube is roughly 400 by 400, or my extents are going to be 200, 200, 200 for my example here, uh, wait, 50 by four, I should have rephrased that. It's gonna be um, 200. So anyways, th these numbers match up. My visual debug and the new size of my cube now match up. And you can see if I fire, you can see I have a much bigger cube, but you can see they're gonna match up roughly the same. And if I hit something, you'll go ahead and you'll see them hit. So we'll go ahead and take our cube, we'll unvisual, visualize it, unvisible it, run this example again, we'll hit right there, and you'll see both of our items are now gone because they're both in our pawn collision channel. So to summarize, I wish I could have shown a better one, but unfortunately to visualize my example with a different set of a primitive component, it would have been very difficult because I don't have any, I don't have any artwork to really do this with. But how this works is basically you feed in a component, a primitive component, it's going to use that component's collision setup to look for an overlap. So make sure that component has proper overlap channels set up so that way it'll overlap against what we want here. It's going to grab the transform. So most of the time you'll probably want to grab the item itself and grab its transform. You can do whatever you want. You can see here I grabbed it. For this example, I simply attached our cube onto our sphere. But if, for example, you wanted a custom collision for some other reason, maybe a starburst pattern or something like that, it can be gotten from anywhere. You're simply grabbing a primitive component and feeding it in and grabbing in a transform and feeding it in. Make sure you filter out the correct object type. These are the only ones in this array that we want to check against. These are specific ones we can filter out optionally. These are things we can ignore optionally and then we're going to either all the actors that made it through this test or all the components that made it through this test and a true or false if we actually had anything and that's it that is going to wrap up our component overlap actors and component overlap components nodes these are useful for when the other overlap nodes the box the sphere and the capsule don't quite fit the requirements you want for your overlap you want to do something special so as long as you have a primitive component you can feed in, you can basically have any type, size, shape, rotation of an overlap check using these nodes.